This is your evening news update for Tuesday, April 12. Thanks for joining us. As the Barbados Water Authority works to restore water to thousands of customers affected by outages, ongoing repairs at the Bell Pumping Station, now into day three, were set back today. According to Acting Minister of Transport, Works and Water Resources, Dr. Rommel Springer, the platform supporting the pumps was not easy to dissemble and workmen encountered issues that prevented the damaged structure from being easily removed. This hiccup, he said, delayed the repair work by an additional five to six hours. He, however, noted that they were able to reconnect the pumps to the distribution network and are expecting to start the removal of two other pumps and the repair of their support structure. Dr. Springer acknowledged increasing reports of outages in a number of areas, but he assured the BWA will be deploying tankers to the affected areas. International economist Dr. Justin Ram says while the Barbados government's recently increased tax on sweetened beverages is a step in the right direction, it will not be enough to remedy the country's non communicable diseases crisis. From April 1, the excise tax on sugar sweetened beverages was doubled, moving from 10% to 20%. Speaking on a conversation about sugar in the Barbadian society, spearheaded by the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Barbados and the Barbados Childhood Obesity Prevention Coalition on state television last night, Dr. Ram said it will require much more. But it certainly is insufficient. Um, if it is a health crisis, then we need to be doing a lot more. Um, and, 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 and one of the things we have to look at here is that this health crisis is a significant externality on the rest of society. Spending $375 million per annum on NCDs is unsustainable. And, and we should really want to put an, an, an end to that and, and allocate those resources to much more productive things. But the taxes, I think, are in the right direction. We do have to consider whether we need to raise that tax further. But I would have to say here that taxation alone will not get us to where we want to be. I agree with Sir Hillary here that it has to be a, a much more comprehensive approach to this, which, in, which which requires educating the population from a very early age, encouraging um, different lifestyle choices, and of course, making available other better nutritional meals and drinks available to the average person. A call for leaders in Barbados and the region to make room for civil society organizations and non-governmental organizations in the decision-making process. The officer in charge of the Caribbean Policy Development Center, Richard Jones, contends that while these groups have been playing a major role in providing critical support to individuals and families over the years, they appear to be locked out of key decision-making within CAT Reform. The need for such participation is more urgent than ever as the pandemic increased the demand for services from the sector, even as the sector is confronted with its own precarity. Our sustained research throughout this prolonged health crisis has shown that the often undervalued and overworked third sector is facing its own crisis, from which some may not recover. He made the comments as he addressed the launch of the CPDC's 11 European Development Fund Civil Society Project at the Marriott Hotel today. Head of the European Union delegation to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean says government should see civil society organizations as partners. CSOs stand out thanks to their capacity to reach out to, represent and defend vulnerable groups. CSO projects have the ability to experiment, move faster than government, and trigger social innovation. Civil society is the place where policies are debated and ideas tested. In that role, civil society is not necessarily working against or in competition to the state, but supporting and ensuring connectivity both bottom-up and top-down between the state and the society it represents. Therefore, governments should view civil society not as a threat, but as an asset. Now for today's COVID-19 update. New infections reach 543, that's 252 males, and 291 males. They were recorded on Monday from 1,666 tests carried out by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases consisted of 116 persons under the age of 18 and 427 who were 18 years and older. 
A total of 87 people are in isolation facilities, while 2,981 are in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. For regional news, St. Lucia's Prime Minister Philip Pierre assures the country he will do whatever is necessary to safeguard St. Lucians from rising oil prices. The cost of petroleum products are up and consumers are feeling the pinch at the pumps and in the kitchen with petrol and cooking gas prices soaring. The upward trend in prices has been attributed to the pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. St. Lucians are looking to the government to help offset the financial pressure on their pockets. The price of fuel is going up, but in every country in the world. Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre speaking to the media on Monday ahead of a meeting of cabinet claims that his administration has done all in its power to keep consumers from feeling the full brunt of the gas price hike. We are actually losing revenue to ensure that the price doesn't go to any level that becomes like in Barbados. It's actually $20 a gallon. Pierre has been pillared by opposition leader Alan Chastney, who has accused the SLP administration of allowing the prices to skyrocket. P On the international front, police in New York mounted an intense manhunt on Tuesday for a gunman who set off two smoke bombs and opened fire in a New York subway car, injuring more than 20 people in a morning rush hour attack. The station's surveillance camera was not working, but they believe they may have an image of the suspect. They're searching for a black male, five foot five inches tall, with a heavy build, wearing a green construction vest, a gray hooded sweatshirt. Police believe the suspect left a nine millimeter gun behind, along with this backpack filled with smoke canisters and fireworks. Officials don't believe the gunman said anything as he opened fire and say so far there's no indication of terrorism. We do not know the motive at this time, but we're not ruling anything out. At least 27 people were injured, several with gunshot wounds. According to the NYPD, all of the victims are expected to survive. Some of the injured hopped on a train across the platform to get to safety. Sunset Park is a vibrant, diverse neighborhood, home to many Asian and Hispanic residents. The incident comes as the city grapples with rising crime, a major issue for the city's new mayor, who is currently quarantining with COVID. As a New Yorker, as a, a former cop, you know the risk of these subways, the vulnerability of these subways. Can they be properly secured? Yes, they can. We have done it and we will continue to do so. We are going to have a doubling of our patrol strength in the subway system. Tonight, the to governor saying enough is enough. It has to end. It ends now. And we are sick and tired of reading headlines about crime, whether they're mass shootings or the loss of a teenage girl or a 13 year old. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.